so today we're going to be talking about the Java programming language. Uh, the Java programming language uh, was a language that was originally developed by Sun Microsystems, a big company, around 95. Um, it's since been purchased by Oracle, so it's now being maintained by a company called Oracle. Um, but you can use it, um, and it's a pretty cool language. Uh, why are we studying Java? Because it always helps to learn yet another language. Uh, you know JavaScript. Now the word Java is in both, right? JavaScript and Java. The two have absolutely nothing in common except the name. They're completely different languages with completely different syntax. And you will see that as we move forward. So on, with JavaScript, if you recall, you would write your JavaScript, your code, put it maybe into a file with .js at the end, and then you could either run it with node by typing node space the name of the file and node would execute your code, or you could hand it off to the browser by creating a script tag, making a reference with SRC, and then your browser would load up the JavaScript and execute it, right? Okay, with Java it's a little bit different. With Java, you make a file with a .java extension, but before you run it, you have to compile it. Okay? So in lots of languages that you will study moving forward, including C++, for example, there is a step where you have to first compile a language into something else before you can actually execute it. With JavaScript, that was not the case. You would give the actual source code, the code that you wrote, directly to the execution engine and it would run it. This is a difference. So with Java, what happens is once you have your code, your .java code, you have to compile it using a Java C command. And you can run this command in your Windows, in your console, that big black thing that you guys hate. You can type Java C space the name of the, of the file, whatever .java. It will then compile it into a file with the same name with a .class extension. Okay, so if you have a foo.java, you compile it, you get a foo.class. This file contains in it code that's known as byte code. Okay, so remember that, byte code. So you compile Java code into byte code using the Java C or Java compiler. Once you do that, once you have your class file, you can then run it using a thing called a JVM, a Java Virtual Machine. What is a Java virtual machine? A Java virtual machine is just a program that sits on your computer. Uh, there's a JVM or a Java virtual machine that's been written for basically every platform that you will use. Uh, for Mac, for Windows, and for Linux. So you can download the appropriate one. And then once you do that, you can then use it to execute your .class file. Here's what it will do. Your JVM will then take your bytecode and execute it. That is to say, on the fly, it will read your bytecode, convert it into machine language, and give it to your processor, which will then execute your commands. Make sense? Okay. So you have your actual code, your source code, you compile it into bytecode, into these .class files, you then give it to a JVM to execute on your computer. That's it. Any questions regarding that? Simple? Good. Let's keep going. So to get going, to actually run code, there are two options that I will offer you. One option is to download and install a, Java, a JDK, a Java Development Kit. Uh, here's a link. You can go to it and download the appropriate one for whatever operating system you're using. And then maybe you can install something like Eclipse, which is a development environment. Uh, you'll see me using it soon. Uh, it's basically an application that's an editor. It allows you to write Java code in that editor. And then just with one, one click of a button, it will execute your Java code. It's very nice, very easy to use. And I highly recommend that you go through this exercise um, if you want. Alternatively, you can just go online and run your Java code inside of an environment like this. There's Cloud9, there's this one here, which is completely free, and there are lots of other environments that I'll show you, I'll show you this one actually. Um, so that you can run your Java code in your browser without worrying about it. 
Um, so let me show you an example of such an environment. Hang on. Okay. So this is an example of an environment that is online. Let me zoom in a bit. So a typical environment will give you a place to store your files. In this case, we have a file called hello.java. A place to write code. So when you double click on the file, it opens it up here and you can write your code and a console in which you can type commands and you can see your output. So for example, if I wanted to run this, I can click compile. Oh wait, hang on, let me refresh one sec. Reload. Come on. How's my internet? Okay, so yeah, so one of the issues with running things online is you need a good connection. Assuming you have a good connection, you can use this stuff. If you don't, you can actually do what I said originally, which is install the JDK and then run it uh, on the client. Jesus Christ. Okay, so now if I compile, notice how, what happened here. Here it wrote Java C hello world dot Java. If you recall, Java C is the command you use to compile a .java file into a .class file. I can now execute that, and it executes and types hello world in my command line. Don't worry about what the code does or how it did it. We'll cover that in a little bit. I'm just making the point that you can run Java inside of your browser without actually installing anything on your computer. If you have the time, do it, but if you don't, this will do. You can do all your homework assignments here, no problem. So, let's keep going. Okay, so this, let me zoom in, is a very basic Java program. Here it is. Before I talk about what's involved in the code, what the syntax is. This is actually much easier than you think, don't worry. You know most of this stuff. You just have to understand what is what. Um, suppose I wanted to run this code on my computer. What do I have to do? Well, assuming that I've installed the JDK, here's what I'll do. I'll copy the code. Okay, copied it. Now let me um, create a, bl a blank file, paste it in. Now what I need to do, you see how it says class example program? I have to make a file with the same name as my class. Okay, so I'll save this with .java on my desktop, let's say. Save. Okay, so I've saved it. Now how do I actually execute it? Well, let me open up a terminal Go to my desktop, hang on, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm now, can you guys kind of see what I'm typing? Hang on. Yes, you can see? Okay, so now uh, if I do Java C, what was the name of it? Example, example dot Java, hit enter. Okay, I just compiled it. Now let me run it. So I do Java example program and I get, I'm a simple program. That's it, I just ran Java, yay. So again, you write your code. You name the file the same as your class, which we'll talk about later, .java. You compile it using Java C, and then you execute it using Java. That's it. Any questions up until this point? Yes? Dot. Yeah, it's in there. Watch. Um, t -t 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 cat example program dot class. There it is. So yeah, just I. You 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 agree that it's there? Okay, good. Other questions? Yes. When you compile what? 
okay, when you, come, when you do Java C, example, whatever, dot Java, it creates another file called the same name, dot class. That file has different code. It's called bytecode. It's the kind of code that the JVM can understand and can easily interpret into machine language. So there's your code. It gets compiled into bytecode, which gets interpreted by the JVM into machine code. Make sense? You, you can't run your source. You can't run your whatever.java. You have to compile it into class, then execute that. Can we write file I've never tried. Let me, sh let me see. Yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. So Java. No. No, just do, just do that. Yes? That's just, it's how, get, check it out. What up, Tensa? Yeah, you, just, I just want you to know how to execute Java. If I give you code, can you turn that code into something that runs? Yes or no? Yes. My work here is done. Okay. So let's actually learn Java so we can actually know what to actually write in that code. Yes? Keep going? Cool. Okay, so notice that this environment here, hang on. Let's make it poke it out. Okay. Ah, whatever. Okay. So notice that the environment that I have here is very similar to the environment that you have in that online version, in that you have files on the left, your console, and a place to write code. Yes? Very similar. Okay. So the first example I'll show you is a file that I created called example hello world. There it is. So let me get rid of the comments for now, just to make it easier. OK, so what is inside my file? For now, just assume that any time you write Java code, that is to say code that you want to execute, code that you want to run, you have to put it inside of a class, OK? So notice this class has a name, a starting point, and an ending point. Just like in Java, in, uh, sorry, just like in JavaScript, in Java, whenever we want to say start and end, we use this curly brace, just like in, ja in JavaScript, OK? So we're saying we have a class with this name, it has this starting point and this ending point, and all the stuff in between is the code that I want to actually execute at some point. Okay, don't worry about what public is, and don't even worry about what a class actually is. Just worry, just know that there's a start and end, and the stuff in between will run. Trust me, we'll get there. Java has a lot more nuance than JavaScript, so I have to ease you in. So I'll give you details as we move forward. What do you think, forgetting what that is, that is, and that is, what do you think that is? Function. Yeah. See? Easy, right? Once you know JavaScript, this is easy. So you, that's the name of the, of the function, and it takes args. But there's this weird thing next to it. Don't worry about that. Just know this. In JavaScript, we would write the name of the function and the parameters it would take. Yes? In Java, you have to say the type of parameter that it takes, not just the parameter. So in this case, we have main, which is the name of our function. We have args, which is the name of the parameter. But this says the kind of thing that it takes. Now, in JavaScript, what did that mean? Array. array. So it's a string with array. It's, a, it's an array of strings. So what this means is that args is an array of strings. 
So we have a function with a name main. It takes one argument called args. And the kind of argument that is, is an array of text, array of strings. Yes? Yes. Yes, you can call this whatever, you can call this polos. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. No, it, you have to do it this way. We'll get to how you declare arrays later, but no, you can't change that. It, this is syntax. Yes, okay. awesome. So you can call functions anything you want. Right? As you recall, it's just a name. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But, main is actually a reserved word. Why? Because it's the entry point. It's the place where your code begins to execute. In other words, when you say Java space example, ex whatever, example one hello world, and you run it, the JVM will automatically call the main inside of that class. Understand? So this, your code starts here. It starts executing right here. Well, these are comments, they don't count. So this is the only thing that, pr that executes. Let me get rid of the comments to make this simpler. Now in JavaScript, we had this. Console.log, hello world. In JavaScript, what was that? What was console? Huh? It's an object. It has attached to it a function, log, which takes as an argument text. Yes? Okay. And what does it do? It prints to the console. Very good. Okay, now following the same logic that you've learned already, what do you suppose system is? Very good. What do you suppose out is? Out is a function? It's an object. What do you suppose print ln is? And what do you think, so we know what the word print is. It means write, right, print. What is ln? Yeah, print line. So if I were to just do print without the ln, it would print but not go to the next line. If I did print ln, it would print and go to the next line. Got it? Make sense? Watch. Let me do. Print and print. And let me do hello here. And let me do world there. There, save that. I'm going to hit this magic play button to run it. Notice how everything is in one line. Yeah. Yes? Okay. Now let me make it print ln. Print ln. Hello, next line. World, next line. Hello, world, next line. Science? What do you think will happen? Got it? Easy, right? Good. Okay, congratulations. You now, yes. Then it won't run. You can't. You get an error. If you try to run something that doesn't have a main, it doesn't have a place to start, so it says, Asincha. Watch. Let me change main to main one. Save that. See? Main method not found. Look, look at the error. Error. Main method not found in class example one hello world. Expected, right? We want a function called main. Now notice it doesn't say function, it says method. In Java, functions are called methods. It's the same thing. So whenever you see the, the word method, it just means function. Okay? So don't get confused. A method is just a function. Okay? Okay. Good. Whoop, 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 whoop. 
Okay. So just to review quickly before we move forward, we have a class. That's the name. The name of the file is exactly the same as the name of the class with .java in the end. That's a rule. You can't make a, like a class foo and call it bar.java. It won't work. It will give you an error. You can't do that. You have to call your file the same as your class. Understand the rule? Yes, you can have in one file. Mm, I think you can do nested classes, but you can't have them next to it. No, you have to make another file and put it in there. Yes. Because that's the length. Because, because. Because they said so. That's just how it is. Yes. Wait, wait. Just me do it though. Yeah. Uh, I tried to paste in a file. Uh, the, name the, the name of the file and the class name were not matching, but it worked. Yeah. OK, let's try it. I like a challenge. OK, so let's, make, let's have this copy, create another one. Let's call it example. Let's keep calling it example, but then let's save it as test.java. Then let's go to our command line and let's do Java C test. OK, now Java uh, test could not find or load main class test. OK. OK, let's do that. Oh, wait, hang on. Wait. Okay, Java and then that. No look. Are you sure? Okay, you'll show me at office hours, okay? Okay. Must have done something clever. Um, okay, so, qu yes, I'm sorry, go. Yeah, don't, mm, for now, yes. For now, yes. Very good question. What ha in, J in JavaScript, what happens? In JavaScript, what happens? Huh? It will turn the number into a string and print it. Same thing here. Same thing. And we'll get to a lot of the concepts that you learned. This is why we learned JavaScript. Yeah, if you do 1 plus 2, in JavaScript, in JavaScript, what happens? In JavaScript, 1 plus 2. If you do console log one plus two, what happens in JavaScript? It prints, so it adds them up and then does a string which prints the three as a string, right? Same thing. What happens if you do three plus one plus the text, hello? Same thing here. Why? Because one of the sides is a string, so it can get, same thing. Three Uh Keep going. So again, guys, we have a class with a name. The file has the same name, .java. Inside we have this public static, you have to memorize this eventually, but don't worry, public static void main. <laughs> uh, public static void main, oh, forget the one, sorry. Let me get rid of the one. Public static void main, it takes an array of strings. We're not using those, and we do system.out.print or system.out.println print line, we give it text and it prints to our console. Simple? Easy, right? Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, that's reserved. I'll, I'll, okay, let me explain why. Okay, so let me explain this part very quickly. Um, when you run node, right? How do you run node? If you want to execute a file with node, what do you do? Node space file name, very good. If you want to execute, um, say, uh, I don't know, anything else, you want to execute Java, what do you do? What do, you do? Java, space Java space something, right? Okay, so the first thing that you're executing is the name of the actual executable, the Java program, or you're executing Node, which is a program, right? 
The second thing is an argument. It's the text that you write after. It's text. Yes? Right? Okay. That's the text that gets passed into main. So when you double click on, say, a Word file, what's happening is it executes Word and passes as an argument to Word, to the main of Word, the text, which is a reference to that file. And then Word says, I have to open this file, opens the file and shows it to you. Did that make sense? Okay, let me say it one more time. You're in Windows. There's an icon for some document. You know, whatever .excel. You double click on that, on that file. The operating system executes that program, which is Excel, but then passes as an argument text, which is the path to that file. Excel then reads that file and shows it to you. You with me? That text w is what comes here. So here we could read the file that's inside of there and then show it to the user. Does the operating system work with Java? No, well, no. No, but in the command line, if you type in the name of your program, space something, that something will go into this as an argument. I'll get there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, we'll see examples. Okay, good question. So the question was regarding performance. So which is faster, right? JavaScript or, or Java? So here's the, here's the thing. With JavaScript, you give it the actual raw code, and it tries to then turn that into machine language. Okay? With Java, with Java it, you give it the actual source. It first compiles it into an optimized version of what you had, and then when you execute, it just changes this to that. So this is closer to that than this. Turkish? So. Uh, other questions? No? Done? Keep going? Good. All right. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arxico. Can you can you do like this? You did this? I I suppose you can. I've never seen the syntax, but sure, yeah, okay. Fine. <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's keep going. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Just hurry up. Go. <coughs> args is the name of the argument to the function. You'll see it later. When you run, when in a command line, if you do Java space, the name of the class that you want to run, space anything else, anything else will go here. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Hang on. Don't, don't, hang on. Let's do this one at a time. Okay. In JavaScript, how do we create a variable? Okay. So there are two ways. We can do const, like, you know, foo, or we can do let zoo. Right? Okay. So the difference is, is with JavaScript, you don't, have to you don't have to specify the type of variable when you make the variable. You just say, I have a variable, and then you put anything you want inside. Right? Yes? In Java, it's not like that. You have to say what kind of thing that you want. You, you have to say this variable is a character or it's going to be a boolean, or it's going to be a number, but you have to say what kind of number, and there are different kinds of numbers. 
and the kinds of numbers specify the size, the amount of memory that is taken to give you that. Think of it this way. What is a variable? Exactly, it's part of memory. It's a container and you can put stuff into the container. Yes? Yes? Okay. So it turns out that the computer wants to know how much memory to take to make that container for you. Make sense? Okay. So when you say, I want, say, a Boolean, what is a Boolean? Yeah, true or false. How many bits do you need to represent true or false? One. So that means if you're making a variable that you're only going to put true or false, you only need to take one bit in memory. Yes? Make sense? Okay. How many bits do you need to represent? Well, you might not know, but hang on. So these are different kinds of, hang on, up until there, these are different kinds of numbers. They're all numbers, but they're numbers that can represent a different amount of information. So for example, with a byte, you can only represent one digit, zero or one, just like in a Boolean. With a short, you can represent two bits. So how many numbers can you represent? With two bits? Four, right? There's zero, one, two, or three. So four different combinations. Okay, you have an int, which is short for integer. Right, int takes, no, four, bit, four bytes. Four bytes. How many bits is that? Four times eight. Four times eight. Thank you. Four times eight is 32. Very good. So it takes 32 bits, right? So that means if you want to represent a number that was bigger than the, amount, than the number you can represent in 32 bits, you're in trouble. For that, you have to use a long, which allows you eight bytes which is how many bits? 8 times 8 is 64. Very good. Okay, good. You also have float and double. Now, what are the differences between these? Well, with uh, double and float allows you to do decimal. Like get, yes, image, decimal, okay. Uh, with long int and short and bytes, those are non-decimal. Those are whole numbers. Okay? Okay. You can also represent char, which stands for a character. And you can represent the Boolean, which of course you know is either true or false. Yes? So those are more or less our primitives. So now let's see some actual examples. Okay, so in this case, we're representing a variable A that is of type double. And we're putting it into, into it 4.5. Making another one, again, double B. That's the name of the variable, that's the type, and that's the value that's been inserted into B. Let. Yeah, yeah forget var. var. Yeah, one of the reasons why I didn't teach you var is because Java works like let, not like var. So if you learn let, you know both. Go. Yeah, but don't, you can't declare the same variable twice. You can just say A equals 5.5. Watch. If you're saying, if I wanted to change A, could I do this? Yes, yeah. So, remember in JavaScript we had this. Remember this? What was the difference between these two? Right. So this one you can change, this one you cannot. Yes? Okay. The way you make something unchangeable in Java is by putting a word final in front of it. Like that. I just made A constant. With me? So this means it's a constant. This means it's a double. It's a number that has decimals. This is the name. This is the value. Go. Yeah. 
Well, if you only wanted to represent, say, 0, 1, you could, but why? Right? You can, but you're allocating more memory than you need to. It's a waste, right? You only have, remember, guys, in programming, no matter how powerful your computer is, you still have a finite set of resources. You still have a finite amount of memory. So you, ah! So you need to use this memory wisely. Got it? OK. So let's keep going. So even though the amount of information I'm putting in isn't what? Isn't what? OK. So the other thing you can do is you can suppose now my B now has a 5.683, and it's stored inside of B, which is double precision, and that's OK. But now what I want to do is I want to set B into C, which is an int. I have a problem because C only wants integers, and yet B has this number, which is not an integer, right? So what do I do? Well, there's this notion of casting. Casting means you're saying take this and convert it into this other thing. Right, exactly. So what this will do, if I were to take the int of b, what do you suppose goes into c? Voila. Very nice. Perfect. OK. So now if I do system.out.println, this text, by the way, one nuance. In JavaScript, we could represent text either with double quotes or single. In Java, it's only double. Only. Singles are for chars, which we'll see later. Yeah, two, two quotes, two quotes. OK, so it, I have to cast it. If I just do C is B, it will give me an error saying, wait, but B is a double. You can't. Che, che, syntax nothings. That's the language. That's just how you do it. So some of it is just grammar. You have to just know it. Ayo, it doesn't round. Round chianum. In Kawaki, int navesnum. Jokes? OK, so that means what do you suppose this will print? Can Yeah, that's what we're doing here, right? A, a, is a, uh, a is a double, B is a double, and C is an int. And notice how these are in, in brackets. So that means the math happens first. And then what happens if you do a plus with text and anything else? Very good. So if I run this, I get that. Uh, hang on. Okay. You can also, yes. Number? What's your, sorry, what's your question? Yeah. Uh huh. Darchenko said, "I I saw Ned Kevna." We'll get there in one second. So we also have character single characters. Uh, so a single character, you use single quotes. So D is of that type, and you can set that to whatever. This is not used that much. You won't use it much in this class, at least. But it, you have to know it. And then you can do booleans. So boolean B is either true or false. Go. I think so. That's a good question. To get the numeric value of the, of that character, we should try it. But I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. I've never tried. But yeah, try it. Try it and then come back and tell me. Go. How is it different from a string? A string is a whole bunch of things combined together. This is just one. It has to be just one. Yeah. Keep going. Good. B. What? What? It, tell me what this is. Uh, 
It's a variable with this name of that type and of that value. Got it? OK. Look at this. Oh, go. Ah, in, so, OK. So in JavaScript, we have a notion of a number, right? So if you give it a number, it knows it's a number. But it doesn't know how big the number can get, so it automatically just allocates, I think, enough for a double precision. It basically assumes that it's that in JavaScript. In JavaScript, all numbers are that. Exactly. So it's harder to program because you have to figure out ahead of time what everything has to be. But it's smarter because you have control. In any language, there's a limit. In it, you never have a language that gives you anything. But the point is, in JavaScript, it's assumed to just be that always. But here, you can tell it, I only want this or I only want that. Good? OK. Now that you know how to program in JavaScript, this is easy. You have an if statement with some Boolean condition. A start and an end, and the code in between will execute. Yes? So would this code execute? The value of BB. John, the value of BB is true. Therefore, we go into this, and we do whatever that is. The value of BB is true. Very good. This is easy to understand, right? Let's keep going. OK, so now we get to strings. So strings are objects in Java. We know what objects are, right? They're these like container things. We'll talk about how to create objects in Java later. Uh, don't worry about that for now, but just know that it's an object. So we have a string, an S of type that, of type string, assigned to a string. And then you can print it if you want. Go. Say. Yes. It ha yeah, exactly. So you can do that dot and then a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Like you can find the length of the string, for example, by calling dot length. And it's a function, I think. Go. Yeah. So, OK. Do you remember in JavaScript we talked about objects and then we talked about like regular things like numbers and text and boolean and characters and right? So those regular things, the things that are not objects are called primitives. And then you have objects which are these like containers that have lots of things inside, right? OK. In JavaScript, strings are primitives in JavaScript. In Java, strings are objects. That's it. With me? It heto heto kasam. Heto kasam. Ha static public static void. Heto kasam. It pechi. Go. It's exactly like JavaScript. What is that in JavaScript? Yete, truye, apa. Cool? Uh, same thing, yes. You can do else, you can do else if, you can do all that, yeah. Yete, else, chas, guru, mink, shar, nakumawak. Other questions? All right. Let's keep going. No? OK. Conditionals. So one difference with conditionals in Java is that in JavaScript we had this or this. Remember? In Java we just have that and that. Here's the list. So intuitively, you know all of these. These and this and this, you just go from, from JavaScript to Java, is you only have two instead of three. 
Easy. Yes? Boolean, same thing as JavaScript. You have your AND, you have your OR, you have your NOT. We know that too. Easy? Good. Let's keep going. OK. What will this print? Well, first, let's go through what the code does, or what the code is, bless you. We have a class with this name. So what's the name of the file? Thank you, dot Java. We have a function called main, which is our entry point. It's like our starting point. It's where our code begins. There it is, main. When the JVM calls main, it will create a variable a, which is an integer, a b, which is an integer, and a c, which is an integer, putting in 3, 3, and 5, respectively. Yes? Let's keep going. We have a Boolean b. What is the value of b? True. True. Why? Because a is equal to b. So the result of executing this expression is true. Therefore, putting true into b, b now gets true. Yes? Yes? This stuff? Oh, this. Don't worry about any of that. We have, a, we have a function with this name. That's it. When you run your program, it will run this function. That's it. Don't worry about all the other stuff. And then we create the three integers, and then we do this comparison, and we... Yeah. Is A equal to B? What is the result of that? True. So B, B is equal to true, or is assigned to true. So B, B gets true. Yes? Exactly like JavaScript. Yo. Okay, so if you did BB equals A equals B, B would be assigned into A, but then I think you would get an error because you're trying to assign an integer into a bool. Let's see if you, it automatically, I don't think so. One second. Oh, well, first of all, right off the bat, it flags it as an error. Unresolved compilation problem. Cannot convert int to a boolean. Huh. It tells you exactly what it is. Nice, right? Incha? What? Yeah, it doesn't, there's no truthy or falsy here. It's just true or false. Truthy, falsy, chikasta. Go. Look, when the code executes, it will execute this. It will turn that into this. It will then put this into this, and then keep going. As logikai. As I do also mess sa hava sada is equation in equation of the only vori mana in shia hava sir. Always do the stuff to the right of the equation first and then assign it. Other questions? Yeah, go. What? Uh, what if it's what? No, no? No. All right, so you guys still haven't told me. What does this actually do? Huh? Okay, so let's see. Is that true? And is that true? False. With and, both sides have to be true, and since one side is false, done. Okay, we go to the next one. Is A not equal to C? Yes, because 3 and 5 are not the same. So it's true, so we do that.
If can I put a not in front of this whole thing? You mean? Yeah. You mean this? What does this mean? Ah, easy. Guys, guys, wait, wait. So the question was, what does this mean? Well, what is B? B, 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 B is true, right? So this is a not operator, which means it flips it. It does the opposite. What is the opposite of true? False, right? That's it. So what this is saying is true and false and false. Are the questions? Keep going. Go. Version Elsa. Change your clean code. What if this and this failed? Hub, I'd suppose I just want to give you more examples. Suppose we had this. Um, I think this is the one. Oh, you don't have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you don't have to. Yeah, he's, he's saying, do, do we have to have an else? No, you never have to have an else. Fine. Uh, good, simple. We know conditionals. See how fast we're moving, by the way? We're learning a whole new language. We've already learned variables. We already know functions or methods. We already know conditionals. The ifs and the else's. Questions up until this point. Let's just keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, arrays. So, what do you think, what is that? No, what, yeah, exactly, it's a variable what? Name. It's the name of the variable. What is that? The type of the variable. Good. What is the type of this variable? It's an integer array. What does that mean? An array of ints. It's a list of numbers. Then you have to do a character. You can do that. But then you have to have inside of it strings or characters. If you do a, a string of an array of strings, yeah. Wait, what do you mean add string? An array is a list. You can have a list of strings. You can have a list of characters. You can have a list of integers. You can't have two different things if that's what you're asking. Yeah, go. Ah, okay. So wait a minute. So the way you create a new array, a new instance of an array, is you do a new and then this thing. This is saying, make me a list of five things, of five spaces. Why do you suppose I have to give it this number? Exactly. It has to know how much memory to take up. It knows how big an int is. Now it knows I need five of them, so it creates five sections for my list. Whoa, 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 hold up. Go. New, that's just how you construct a new thing, a new object, which in this case is an array. Inga kanakna. Tsutsaki kanakna. Tsutsaki chapna. So five is the size of the array. In JavaScript, if we did dot length, what would that give us? The length of the array. Same thing here. No, what is, yeah, what's the length of the array? Five. What is the first index of that array? What is the last index of that array? See? You know this. It's easy. Go. No, no, you need new. Syntax tensor. Grammatic tensor. Okay. Same as JavaScript. What does this do? This is saying put 33 into 0, put 44 into 1, blah, blah, blah. That's a problem. Yeah. 
No, you can't just, if you do that, okay, so watch, 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 watch. In ja guys, in JavaScript, what happens if you do this? In JavaScript, what does this do? Okay, what would be the length of the array after this? Okay, that plus one. In Java, no. Error. So Java is strict. It's saying you said five. You can't go more than five. No, no, no. So it gives you an error. Huh? Yeah, that's fine. You can do that. Yeah, then you get a bunch of nulls in between. Urish Urish Bampati Octaots. Array of Che. Che. Not not an array. There are other things, structures you can use, objects, but not an array. An array has fixed. Also. To reduce the length of this array? No, you have to create another array. It's, Im it's immutable. The, the, the size is immutable. You have to create another one. Go. Check. 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 Think of it this way, guys. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. You have your memory, right? Some memory gets allocated, then another piece of get memory gets allocated, then another piece, then another piece, right? Okay, if you go back here, can, I, can you just do this? You're stepping on someone else, right? So you have to make another one. Jokes? So you can't just make the array bigger, you have to just make another one. Just got poches, but in notice I guess. Yeah, those are my Yes, go. Dude, I am. I don't hear you. Go. Oh, oh, empty ones. Okay, so in JavaScript, empty was undefined, right? Okay. Uh, in Java, we don't have undefined. We have null. So if something doesn't have a value, it's null. If I make a variable and I don't put a value into it. In JavaScript, the value for that variable is undefined, right? In Java, it's null. <laughs> yes. Dynamic arrays? You, can, you have to just make arrays. You can't make... Oh, you mean an ever-growing array? Okay, so you, you can use like a linked list data structure, but that's a data structure, that's not an array, right? Okay, questions, oh, let's keep going. Okay, so we know we can't do this, right? We're constrained by the size of the array. The other piece of syntax you should know is this. This allows you to create an array but put numbers in there right away. So in this case, we're still saying this is the name, this is the type, so it's a list of numbers, it's an array of numbers. And right away we're saying that array contains 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if we print our index, R2 index of 1, what will that give me? Good. 2. Zero, 0 index, 1 index, 2 index, 3 index, 4 index. I didn't invent the language. Yeah, here you want to turn that into five? Oh, you want to put five in there? Oh. I see. You're saying, why don't we try this? You're saying that?
Verçin'e çıkıyor kesin. Sayınız? Çeyhetten şişe gav. Oraya imeç hiç tanım canı. Sağmaj denem hiç sens? Esin çek alsın. You're just making stuff up. Listen, this is great, but do it on your own time. <laughs> so you're right that, wait, you're right that this will also, wait, wait, guys, one thing you did notice is right. This and this is basically, ah, uh, and that is the same. That you're right. Everything else you said, not really. <laughs> okay, other questions? Easy, right? Yes. So we know arrays. Let's keep going. By the way, the stuff we're covering in like, uh, what time is it? We have five minutes. All right. We covered in one class what people normally cover in like a couple of weeks. And we can do this because we know JavaScript. Ah. Booyah. All right. Let's do this last one and then we're done. Then we take a photo and we go home. Does anyone remember how to do a for loop? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Now that you understand that for variables you have to declare the type, this is easy. We have an i except instead of doing let i, we do int i because i is an, it's a number, right? It's an integer. As long as i is less than whatever, i plus plus. Same syntax, except we have, you have to declare the variable properly. Other than that, it's exactly the same. Go. For the inchanic, Jana? Yeah, no, your, your computer will just... What the forma? Kill the process. Command, control, C. Command, uh, yeah, control, C. Okay, any questions as to what this is or how it works? Congratulations, you know for loop in Java. Any questions about this one? Is there anything here you don't already know? Congratulations, you know a while loop in Java. Wow, this is fun. This again is the same. Ah, there is one minor difference. Hold up, hold up. So this last one, how do you, what's an easy way for you to iterate over an array in JavaScript, in JavaScript? Exactly, you do the array, the name, dot, dot for each, and it will call your function for every item in the array. Yes? In Java, you can't do that. In Java, you do a for, you make a variable for the values that you're going to get, and it's like saying for every L inside of R, and then you print it. So this L will, on the first time, be American, next time it will be university, next time of, next time Armenia. No, it's not reserved. You can call this whatever you want. Yeah. It's a variable name. It's a name that you use to refer to that value from your loop. Who does not? Yeah. Go. The more you learn, the more you understand the difference. But okay, so this part, does anyone not understand how this works? You, you don't. Okay. So this is say this is the array, right? This will represent a value in the array for every cycle. So the first cycle L is America and we print that. Next cycle, L will be this. Next cycle, L will be that. Within the, from there to there, within that section. I, element, call it Boros. Change L to Boros. Change L to my happy text. Go. 
What? Yeah, that's that means for every for every L inside of R, run this. Yeah, you can also do this. You're right. You could also, guys, guys, guys. Wait, you can also do for um, int i is zero, i is less than r dot length. I plus plus. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. And then here you do R I. That's the same thing. Yes? That's what you said. <laughs> here you have to deal with an extra variable that you have to change and worry about its iteration and maybe make a mistake, maybe have the less than be wrong. What if you do less than or equal to, and then you get out of index exceptions. With the other one, you can't make a mistake. Other questions? Print L, print L, print L. Print. It will print this, then this, then this, then this. Other questions? No? You sure? Good, let's take a photo.